U.S. Capitol Police say their security cameras did capture the attack on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband, but officers only noticed the break-in after local police responded. On Tuesday, the man accused of assaulting 82-year-old Paul Pelosi pleaded not guilty to several charges, including attempted murder. Jonathan Vigliotti has more. We're now learning that the break-in at Nancy Pelosi's home was captured by security cameras set up outside the house. Sources tell CBS News they're part of a network of roughly 1,800 cameras that the U.S. Capitol Police can access at any time. Meanwhile, details about what happened inside are coming into sharper focus. According to this criminal complaint, alleged assailant David DePep allowed Paul Pelosi to use the bathroom, where he grabbed his phone, called 911, and put it on speaker. DePep got agitated. Pelosi tells the 911 operator that the man told him to put the phone down and just do what he says. The dispatcher then asked for DePap's name, and he responded, My name is David. Our he doesn't know who the mail is, but he advised that his name is David. A terrifying series of events continued to unfold, DePap trying to restrain Pelosi, Pelosi trying to grab the hammer. When police arrived, Pelosi could not maintain his grip. DePap took the hammer, lunged at Pelosi, striking him in the head at full force, knocking Mr. Pelosi unconscious for about three minutes, waking up in a pool of his own blood. DePap later told officers it was a suicide mission. DePap allegedly named other targets, including several prominent state and federal politicians and their relatives. I anticipate a lot more violence so long as conspiracy theories about our election, about our democracy, are able to thrive uh, unopposed in our online spaces. And sources tell CBS News the cameras around the home were not being monitored at the time because Nancy Pelosi was in Washington. U.S. Capitol Police say they have begun an internal security review following the attack, Elaine. Jonathan, thank you. For more on this, I want to bring in CBS News investigative producer Michael Kaplan from Washington. Michael, welcome. So what did the security cameras outside Pelosi's home capture, and when did Capitol Police become aware of the break-in? Hi, Elaine. Yeah. So uh, we've learned from sources that security cameras actually captured the break-in uh, when the alleged assailant uh, took a hammer to the glass back door of the Pelosi home, uh, smashed it, and let himself in. Um, and that footage was being fed uh, live to a Capitol Police command center here in Washington, D.C. Um, there was no one watching that feed, however, and um, it was only, not until minutes later when uh, a officer saw a police cruiser in the driveway with, with uh, lights flashing uh, that the official uh, became aware of the incident at Pelosi's house. We've also learned um, that the uh, alarm, there was no alarm system uh, that went off when the glass was broken by the alleged assailant. Um, and that raises questions about sort of the security, what sort of security protocols the Pelosi's had in place at their house. So I just want to clarify, so no alarm system went off when that glass was broken. Is Correct. it clear that there was an alarm system in place, or is that something we don't know at this point? It's it's unclear. It's mm. unclear whether there was an alarm system, whether it was armed. Um, what is concerning uh, to the sources and, and um, law enforcement officials is that there, there was no alarm tripped when the glass was broken. So you said a moment ago no one was watching that live feed as it came in. I think naturally some people will have the question then, did Capitol Police essentially drop the ball here? Well, it depends who you ask. Um, you know, I think it raises questions about um, had someone been watching that feed and um, alerted law enforcement when the break-in happened, could precious minutes have been saved um, and could police have gotten there sooner? Um, you know, I talked to a source inside the Capitol Police who said they have 1,800 uh, security cameras around the Capitol complex and at points of high interest around the country. And it's just unrealistic to think that they can man those 1,800 cameras sort of 24-7. Um, you know, I the Pelosi home 
the, the source told me the Pelosi one was not a priority at this time because the speaker was in Washington with her security detail um, and they had eyes on her, her there. And because she was not home, it wasn't a priority. Um, you know, people I talked to on the Hill say that's not an excuse. Essentially, she's the third in line of the presidency. The department itself has um, said she's one of, if not the most targeted uh, members uh, by, by these threats. And just the amount of sort of hatred and sheer vitriol we saw on January 6th directed towards her merits uh, sort of round the clock security for not only her, but her her family and her, her spouses or her spouse. Um, so, Michael, I want to also make sure I understand this. That is the um, information you're getting from your sources. Has there been a sort of public official statement by Capitol Police on what exactly took place? Yeah, well, the Capitol Police confirmed late today that, that no one was monitoring those security cameras at the time that the feed was coming in. Um, they've also said that they've launched a security review. And um, I'm told by people, uh, I'm told by sources that that changes have already been made in terms of enhancing security for top congressional officials. Um, you know, I think that we've been reporting on these threats, this de deluge of threats that the Capitol Police has had to deal with uh, leading up to January 6th, uh, between January 6th and and today, and, um, you know, I think they're a little bit frustrated. Um, and if you look at their statement from tonight, you know, they are urging, um, they say the change that will have the most immediate impact is they're urging people across the country to lower the temperature on political rhetoric. And then they say before it's too late. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of frustration that they're the ones having to catch the results of all this, uh, all this sort of vitriol and and political uh, division and and name calling that's going on. It's hard to imagine in this climate, Michael, as you know, how that temperature might be lowered uh, given what we've seen take place. Michael Kaplan in Washington for us. Michael, thank you. Thanks, Elaine.